So the Ministry of Health has been hosting a series of stakeholder consultation to sensitize persons about the importance of the HPV, which is a human papilloma virus, and the importance of immunization. We're here with Director of HIV AIDS Secretariat and the focal point for communicable diseases and the expanded program on immunization to Sephora Roach. Tell us a little bit about this HPV sensitization and the importance of it here. Okay, Nika, we know that um, cancer of the cervix is the second leading cause of death among women globally and in the Caribbean. In fact, in 2013, um, cervical cancer accounted for 13% of the overall deaths. In 2014, we conducted a, a HPV prevalence and acceptability study to um, look at um, a cohort of women 30 years and over. And that um, finding revealed that about 29.9% of the women had high risk HPV. And we know that HPV are the causative agents for cervical cancer. Hence, um, the Ministry of Health is planning to introduce the HPV vaccine into the National Immunization Program because this is, immunization is a is primary prevention. Once you're implementing any new, any public health intervention, we introduce in any new vaccine, it is important to keep the public informed. You have to involve the public because it's crucial to um, success. So hence the reason for us to have this series of stakeholders meeting to inform the public, hear from them their views, how they feel, to find out if they have any um, questions about the HPV vaccine and if they would want their, their girls to have it. And what has the response been so far? So far, the response has been positive because yesterday we met with um, faith-based leaders. We met in the morning with faith-based leaders and in the afternoon we met with the Ministry of Education. And today we met with a group of health workers. Now we're going to continue the um, sensitization because we can't just stop here. We want to touch every segment of the population. Okay. And uh, um, this vaccine that will be introduced, will it be compulsory? Um, what are the pros and the cons to having it? Okay. I would not say it would be compulsory. We, we will be providing the parents, we'll be providing the general population with the information so they can make an informed decision. And the question you have to ask, if there is a vaccine out there that would prevent your daughter from getting cervical cancer, won't you take that vaccine? So we're going to prevent, provide them with the information to help them to make an informed, positive choice. From the sensitization that has been occurring thus far, what is the major concern that has been coming out of the meetings? The major concern, I think, persons are asking about if we introduce a vaccine, is it going to cause per, um, persons to become more sexually active? Okay. That's a, that's a major concern. That's a major concern. That's a, well, each group, that's the question that they raise. Okay. All right. What else do you want Vincent to know about this human population virus? Well, um, to let them know that the human papilloma virus is a major cause of cancer and there is a vaccine, a safe and effective vaccine that can prevent persons from getting cervical cancer. All right, Sister Roche, thank you for taking the time out to share with us. 
So we're here with Dr. Karen Lewis Bell, and she's a PAHO WHO advisor for immunization for the Caribbean subregion. And she's here to offer some support, technical support to the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and the Environment. Now, Dr. Bell is going to pretty much give us a synopsis um, or a better understanding of this HPV, um, the concerns and the misconceptions that people may have of it, and the importance of getting the vaccine. Okay, so thank you very much for having me, first of all. And I would like to really commend St. Vincent and the Grenadines for taking the decision to introduce this HPV vaccine. It really is a vaccine that prevents cancer, and cervical cancer especially. All cases of cervical cancer are caused by the human papilloma virus, the HPV, for which there is a vaccine that is quite safe and effective. Cervical cancer is the second leading cause of death from cancers in women, and the Caribbean has one of the highest burdens of cervical cancer, not just cases, but also deaths, um, second only to Africa. So it is important for us to protect our girls, and it is important for us to introduce the vaccine to girls to provide that personal protection, that protection from cancer. And so I think it's very important and very commendable that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has decided to introduce that vaccine for girls. Some persons may ask, why only girls? Well, girls are the ones that have a cervix. And if the objective of the program is to reduce the incidence and deaths from cervical cancer, then girls really should be the priority. But studies have shown that if it, the girls are vaccinated and a very high coverage of over 80% is reached in girls, then there is also some added protection and some benefits for the boys as well, what we call herd immunity. So the boys are also benefiting from the vaccination in girls. Okay, we, through the sensitization workshop, I realized that um, some males um, can be affected too in terms of um, their penis um, and the anal. Um, how critical is this for our population in terms of what we do in terms of the the vaccination. Okay, so almost all cases of cervical cancer are caused by the HPV, um, but it can also cause cancer of the vagina, the vulva, the penis, the anus. But those incidence rates are much lower than cervical cancer, so the burden of disease is not as high from those illnesses. And one of the things, too, is that with the HPV vaccine as a preventive strategy against cervical cancer, um, we still have to continue to educate persons about personal hygiene, about safe sexual practices, um, to prevent the spread of the virus as well. And so, again, if we have a high coverage in girls, then the boys will be protected as well. So they will have some benefits of the vaccination without directly vaccinating the boys. So there will be some protection in the boys as well. In the work that you have been doing, what is the major misconception you'd have, you would have identified concerning the vaccine? Well, because of social media and international news, a lot of concerns have been raised about the safety of the vaccine. So a number of side effects that they have been reporting on are you know, things like fainting in girls, um, bleeding disorders, neurological effects, etc. But the reality is that a lot of studies have been done by, on this vaccine by independent experts all over the world, and everybody has come up with the same conclusion that the vaccine is safe, it is effective. This vaccine does not have any live viruses, it has no antibiotics, it has no preservatives, so it cannot cause the disease, it really cannot cause some of these conditions that have been attributed to this vaccine. Um, vaccines are given to the adolescent girls or pre-adolescent girls. Oftentimes, uh, you know, they may be a little bit scared of the sight of the needle. It may cause them to faint. Um, sometimes they may not eat sufficiently um, before going to school where the vaccines are given in school. And so, you know, these are some of the false misconceptions that people have. And, you know, if one or two girls faint, if you know, everybody sees the, these girls fainting, the other students, then oftentimes they, they faint as well. Studies have been done in Colombia, 
And even girls who didn't get vaccination were fainting. Mm. And the rate of fainting was not higher in those who were vaccinated compared to those who were not vaccinated. So all of these uh, myths and concerns about the safety have been investigated by independent experts globally. And the evidence is there that the conditions that are being attributed to the vaccine are really not being caused by the vaccine. It is safe, it is effective. What's been raised by a number of persons is that the vaccine will cause promiscuity in girls. It will cause the girls to engage in more sexual activity. But the reality is that even if the vaccine was not introduced, sexual activity is still occurring in girls. Um, it's not going to increase the rate of sexual activity because sexuality is dependent on a number of factors. Um, in society, the opportunities that may be there for girls to engage in sexual activity, listening to the lewd lyrics of the music that's you know playing on the radio, in the public transportation systems, um, the use of alcohol early, the use of tobacco or other um, substances like marijuana. The important thing is that this virus causes cancer a cancer that is the second leading cause of death. Okay, what about what age um, is the vaccination intended for? And is there a limit? Well, the vaccine is recommended for use in girls nine and up to women of age 26. But ideally the vaccine should be given before the individuals become exposed to the virus. And so it is recommended that for introduction in a country, it be given to adolescent or pre-adolescent girls from ages 9 to 13 years of age. Why preferably before you start engaging in sex? Because the vaccine really is protecting against the human papilloma virus, which is transmitted sexually. So the, the vaccine works best and produces a better immune response in an individual before they are exposed to the virus. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. And the... So women over age 26, it would not be beneficial to them? They could get some benefit, but it would not be as effective because over age 26, they would have actually have had repeated exposure to the HPV virus if they have been sexually active. Because the virus, it's usually once someone is infected, it is the persistent and repeated exposure of the virus um, that leads to cancer. So a woman of age 26, if she became sexually active at age 15 or 16, she would have had repeated exposures to the virus. So the vaccine would not be as effective in preventing that infection in her. Okay. What about women who are have one steady partner? What is their risk? Is less of a risk, if you, or does it matter if you if you are a faithful partner, but the other partner is unfaithful? Does that have any effect? That's a very good question because a lot of people have the misconception as well that cervical cancer only occurs in promiscuous women. Now, because HPV is transmitted sexually, a woman who has one steady partner or is serially monogamous, she may have one steady partner for a number of years and then for whatever reason that relationship fails and she moves on to another partner, it doesn't necessarily mean that she is at any higher risk than a woman who only has one partner for life. Because it, this, the transmission, because it is sexual, we also have to consider the history of the partner as well. So a woman can have one steady partner, but her partner may have had several partners in the past. Mm -hmm. So it is important to note that HPV is sexually transmitted, even though repeated exposure um, is what causes cervical cancer. Even in a woman who has been monogamous all her life, one steady partner, there is a risk um, that that person could also be exposed to HPV and it could progress to cancer. Final encouragements that you would give to persons concerned in this um, immunization? Well, I think individuals should look on it as personal protection. HPV vaccination is about protecting the individuals. It's about cancer protection. It's really not about preventing sex or, or increasing sex, but it is a sexually transmitted infection, yes, we know, but it is more about cancer protection, about personal protection. All of us, um, we are either women, 
even if they are men, they have daughters, they have mothers, they have sisters, and nobody wants to get cancer. Dying from cancer is not, a, not an easy thing. And so I think everyone would want to prevent cancer, um, either in themselves or their family members. And I think we have to look at it from a personal point of view. This is about cancer protection and cancer prevention. And therefore, the vaccination is very important. And I think it is important for individuals to encourage um, their daughters to get this vaccine and to encourage others to have their daughters vaccinated. Would your children get the vaccine? Oh, my children have been vaccinated. I have two girls. I know that they will eventually become sexually active. I would love to see them get married and give me grandchildren. And so I wanted to make sure that my girls were protected. I don't want my girls to die from cancer. So I made sure that both my girls had the vaccine. I asked I ask that question because sometimes persons would be like, oh, they advise you to do this, but they wouldn't want it for themselves. So. Oh, certainly. And, and no health ministry, no health organization would promote something that they know is not beneficial or not safe for the population. That's not what public health is all about. Public health is all about promoting the health and well-being of individuals. So certainly, um, the Minister of Health in St. Vincent would never promote a vaccine that they know would not be beneficial to the women and the girls and the population at large. Thank you so much, Dr. Bell, for taking the time out with us. We appreciate it. You're most welcome.